Now, in anime or manga, be as it may, when it comes to characters, my most favorite characters are always the secondary characters. Majority of the time, for some reason, the more developed and better growth characters within a story are always the secondary characters. And it's true for most cases where anime, manga, or most forms of media is these people are dealing with a weird, different kind of less cliche situation compared to the main character. So, I guess that's no exception for Happy Sugar Life as well. As this episode was mainly focused on um, Sato's best friend, Shoko, and of course, Chiyo-chan's older brother, Asahi. And I gotta say, I really love these characters. Out of all the characters in the show, these two are my favorites, and my heart goes out to both of them. It's my god. When you really think about it, they're the only two normal people in this whole entire messed up show. So, how can you not like them? They both have some very decent and honest goals compared to everyone else just being, in a way, kind of selfish to themselves. Everyone's just giving into their temptations and desires and just not regarding anyone else's um, safety whatsoever. Especially so Sato, Tayo, and even the freaking creepy ass teacher. These are the only two normal people. So yes, I am definitely on their side 100% all the way. So, the only minor thing that really happened in this episode really was just the teacher trying to find some way to expose Sato, believing that she had killed her aunt, and of course Tao finding some way to make Chio Chan all for himself. But they only played minor roles in this episode. As I said before, the main story for today is Sato, I mean, Shoko and Asahi. So let's talk about Aussies first, because I've been really wild about this mystery between him and Chio Chan. And my god. Yo, man. Just respects. I got nothing but respect for you, Asahi. For the things you had to go through, the things that you went through. My god, man. Just wow. We finally get to see the family that Asahi and Chio Chan grew up with. And I gotta say, it's it's just terrible. That these things even happen in the real world. It, it, it sucks. It really does. And you see the mom. My, my main wonder was about the mom. What was the mom like? Because in Chio Chan's perspective, the mom seems like someone creepy or someone just delusional. But when we see her through a more mature eyes, which is Asahi's eyes, the mom was just this very fragile but yet strong inner type of person who put up with all this torment and burden for the sake of her children. And Aussie's plan was, hey, um, the, the dad doesn't really care about you, so you guys go run off somewhere, and when I'm finally old enough on my own, I'll come up and meet with you guys, and we can be a family again. Because as you see this, even when um, Chio Chan and the mom left off, the dad really didn't care that much, because he said, hey, that's, less, that's too less mouth for me to feed. I'm like, you freaking douchebag. And what he does is, guy, like, he just beats him up, you know, makes him buy beer. He don't get the beer, he gets hit. Uh, he even peel off all his stinger nails. My God. That was just fucking terrible. And then, the thing I always see in anime, and I hope this isn't real in Japan, but in anime, it seems like every time you see someone abused or beaten or stuff like that, we've always see side background characters seeing it but they don't want to say anything like for instance you'll see the two average gossipy women in the neighborhood you see one say hey are you okay and the other one says don't don't bother them so or so this reason why i really hope it's not like that in japan i really do because um it's very disturbing because i know in america hell if you can hear some very odd noises next door and you feel like someone's getting abused people will call the cops on them immediately. Like, screw this mind your own business. Someone could possibly be having their life be tormented right now. And you're just sitting there saying, that's mind your own business. Nah, calling the cops. Same thing with the women. If, I know if two women were outside and they see a, a abused child, they would not only call the cops, but they would also call their husbands and go over there to beat that man's ass. That's all I'm saying, people. It's, it's, it's the truth. You know, despite the flaws of America, the one thing is, is when they see someone in trouble, they're not going to say, mind your own business, let's not bother them. 
they're going to do something about it. They're actually sometimes you put the law in their own hands, which you shouldn't do, but at least it's nice to know that you have people that will go out their way to help you. And I've seen this too many times in anime, in manga, where these people just ignore these people that are suffering so much, and that really sucks. So, some years later, the dad finally dies, so finally the plan can commence where he can finally live with his mom and Chiochan. But when he got there, Chiochan is missing. So that's another key mystery we need to find out. Did Chiochan run off? Or did she get lost? Or did the mom abandon Chiochan? We don't know that part just yet. But I know from, from Chiochan's perspective, the mom was obsessed with Chiochan not going outside. So I'm wondering. Maybe Chiyo trying to run away, or they got lost. Who knows? But something must have happened. So we got to see Asi's perspective, but we'll probably see more light later down the road of what also happened during those days as well. So, in a way, it, it, it sucks. I see this kid who went through so many years of abuse so that one day he'll come to the people he loved and live happily ever after. But when the old man finally kicked the bucket and he's there just ready to be with his mom and his baby sister and to see that baby sister's gone, of course this guy is going to go out of his way and spend every day looking for his baby sister. But to tell you the truth is, I don't know why he won't go to the cops. You know, the cops, like, why doesn't anyone in the show, let alone any most anime manga, Go to the freaking cops. That is what the cops are here for. They're here to help you. They're here to protect and serve. To freaking protect and serve people. So if you have a little girl that's been missing for such a long time, you should have some investigators go into it. Something. You could try some way to earn some money or something to hire an investigator to go look for Chiochan. And, and how easy it was so far for so many people to find out where Chiochan is right now. I'm pretty sure an investor an investor investigator <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Anyways, investigator would have a hard time finding Chiochan. But so far, I'm gonna be honest, Sato's been sloppy when it comes to hiding her footprints. She's been very sloppy at it. So it, it's, it's kind of messed up. If you see Sato being extremely selfish in her way, her version of love is completely ignorant and childish. You need to bring this child home or something. You probably are doing a better job taking care of this child, but she is not yours. But I guess that's the point of the show, isn't it? So now let's go on to Shako's side, Sato's best friend. So as we all know in the past, Sato and Shako in a way were like, high school or you might call them JK prostitutes. They will go around the city uptown and late at night, hit on guys, do some tasks for them, where you go on dates or some sex or anything like that and they will get paid. They were prostitutes. So in a, in according to research, JK girls like that are extremely big market in there where they just everyone's crazy for JK girls for some reason over there. Like, okay, okay. So anyway, ever since Sato found Chiochan, she completely dropped everything. And I mean dropped, I mean she, everyone else in her life is irrelevant. She may act friendly and nice to you, but deep down, I'm guessing she doesn't really care about you. Because when it comes to her love for Chiochan, she'll just push you up the way. She would push you off a cliff, stab you in the back, whatever, even set you up for the sake of her Chiochan. And it really sucks. Shako feels lonely. She feels abandoned and isolated. She feels like she's losing her best friend, and after hearing some things of her best friend might be into something, some deep trouble, she wants um, Sato to tell her about it. But Sato ain't having any of that. As you can clearly see, Sato was so such a psychopath. She just shoved it off, like it completely ignored her about the question, like just don't get involved. You're a nice person don't get involved in this because or else you're going to pay for it. So her struggles, not just trying to find her own place because her finding her prince, her one true love, just like Sato did, it's not working out for her. I guess she doesn't really want that in a way, but her meeting up with Asahi in a way, it felt like a 
chance of fate in a way. These two people have something in common. They're trying to get, bring back something that they once had to be whole again. But however, it's very difficult because ironically, those two things are together. But the question is, can I get them back? So when you thought at the very end, where you thought that things were finally cleared up, Sato probably let her in finally. No, it feels like something else. You saw the static at the end. Oh, that's sweet. I was in the static, and I went quiet. Like, God damn it! You already know what's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen down the road. Sato has some plan, or she's going a trick. But you know, it means Sato doesn't care for Shoko like that, or probably doesn't trust her, and it sucks. It really does. So yes, I have to say, this is by far my most favorite episode of Happy Sugar Life. And like I said before, um, it's because the secondary characters. I don't know why, but I've always been a fan of secondary characters in anime. Because they always have the better story, the better background. It's like with Fairy Tale. Like I have this love-hate situation with Fairy Tale, but yet it's like I like Gajil and Grey over Natsu and Lucy or Ezra. Or any other kind of anime. I, I like those secondary characters because they're always have a more interesting kind of struggle. Something that feels more personal. So yeah, that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys are enjoying Happy Sugar Life. You know, I hope it's giving you the suspense and craziness that you desire for us edge lords out there. So anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and of course hit that bell icon so you get uploaded every time. To get notified every time I upload. <laughs> I was gonna do that backwards. My god. Was, I, need to, I need to write some scripts once in my life. Just write a script. Just write a script. Anyways, I have been Matt Crown Anime and I'm signing out. Have a good one.